One of the oldest myths concerning the internal combustion engine, and like probably the most confusing and contradictory if you're trying to learn about this stuff and, and, and trying to learn how to make horsepower, is that engines need back pressure to run. It's the exact opposite. Now this, this, like I said, this is an old wives tale. Like this is like, this goes back to when I was a little kid and the old timers would all be like, oh, when engine needs back pressure to run. This probably comes from old timers way back in the day, putting an engine together and trying to get it to run without the exhaust manifolds, just open ports. And they would find that it, it, once you got the thing to start, it would make no power, it would miss, it would, it would just, it would run like shit. But then when you throw an exhaust manifold on the car, on the engine, they, all of a sudden it runs, right? So if you're not really, uh, uh, if you're not really knowledgeable about how uh, camshaft events affect the way an engine runs, you would just say, oh, well, it needs back pressure, right? But no, what it actually needs is a scavenging slash vacuum system. So let me explain, right? So every engine you're going to come across has got some degree of overlap ground into the camshaft. So overlap is when both the intake and the exhaust valves are open at the same time. So low performance engines, you know, regular passenger car engines, have a small amount of overlap. Uh, you know, higher performance engines have a, a large amount of overlap. And generally that's where the lumpy lump comes from in the camshaft. So the reason that overlap is there is that when the piston is at top dead center, before it starts on its way down, now this is at the top of the exhaust stroke. So you got to picture this now, right? Uh, the exhaust valve is closing. The intake valve is just starting to open. The piston is at top dead center and about to start drawing, coming down and drawing the intake charge in. During that period of overlap, the vacuum supplied by the exhaust system is used to start the mixture, the, the intake mixture, coming into the chamber, into the, in, into the, into the cylinder. So basically what will happen is if you start, let's say you, you start your engine and it's got nothing, just, just naked exhaust ports, right? There's no vacuum pulse to help pull that mixture through. And so you don't get full cylinder filling. Uh, you, I mean, obviously you'll get some because the piston coming down is creating vacuum but the charge doesn't really have a head start on it. So you'll get maybe, you know, I mean, you're just, just talking like round numbers, you'll get like three quarters of a cylinder full instead of a, a full cylinder full. So it's like even an exhaust manifold. So you look at this and you say, well, this is all kinds of restrictive, right? You know, this is going to cause back pressure. Well, it does to an extent. Uh, it, you don't want any back pressure at all. This will give you a little back pressure because the cylinders are all batch firing basically into this lock. But because they end up in a collector, which is, you know, just, just the outlet and the head pipe, right? There's a vacuum that's formed over here. And since you've got four cylinders firing into this one opening, the vacuum here is going to be greater than the pressure in, in any given part of the manifold. So here's where your vacuum happens. And as the vacuum is happening, as the exhaust pulse is heading down the pipe, it's sucking along here and it's pulling against each of the ports. And that works with that overlap period to get the mixture going. And then of course you go to the next step, you know, which would represent even less, you know, quote, back pressure, and that's the header. And in this case, now the pulse, each individual exhaust pulse has its own evacuation system and it's pulling that intake through and then you've got the collector combining to keep basically the balance between the cylinders even so that everything is pulling through evenly and you're getting optimum cylinder full fill and optimum horsepower so it's like there's the myth there, there's, there is no benefit to back pressure ever under any circumstances. Get that thought out of your mind. You want a free flowing exhaust system that optimizes, optimizes the scavenging effect. There can also be confused with people will put too big an exhaust system on the car and torque will, the power will fall off. And it's, it's not that the smaller system creates more back pressure, but the smaller system creates a velocity that's more in tune with the engine's breathing characteristics. So basically, a smaller tube will have a greater pull on the, on the intake during that period of overlap than a larger tube. So 
it's important to size your, your, your exhaust system, both the primary, we're talking headers, you know, uh, the primary and the collector and the downpipes, it's important to size those appropriately to the cubic inch of the engine, the RPM range of the engine, the, the intended output, you know, of, of the engine. But yeah, that's it, you know, back pressure, always bad, never good. Scavenging, always good, never bad. So that's it, I'll see you tomorrow.